maybe a year or so ago, I was doing a series on Linux video editors, and the thing that started this series was Caden Live. Now, it's not that Caden Live was inherently bad, the main reason is between major updates, it was really, really inconsistent, where some major feature in my workflow would just stop working for seemingly no reason, whether it's effects would stop working properly, or profiles would stop working properly, or my rendering queue would break, and just random other things that I can talk about basically all day. So until relatively recently, I'd been using Olive 0.1, but I've been slowly drifting back to Caden Live, and as of maybe a couple of weeks back, I've only been using Caden Live. The main reason for this is Olive 0.1 is really, really starting to show its age. It's not been updated in a very long time, and features are starting to break. But I know there is a daily build of Olive 0.2. The main issue with that, though, is it's completely unusable. The rendering has a memory leak. It's been there for, like, I don't know, the past year and a half, and I can't render a full-length video. It is alpha software, though, so it is sort of to be expected. Anyway... I'm back on Caden Live. No Linux video editor is perfect, but it does have massive advantages over many of the other pieces of software out there. Not to say that all of these features are exclusive to Caden Live, it's just that Caden Live is the only thing that I have seen that has all of these features in one package. One of the really important ones for me is when I drag something into the timeline, it gives me this little marker here showing me that it is in the timeline. So right now it says three, that means there are three tracks in the timeline. If I cut it in half, it's going to say six, cut it again, so on and so forth. This is really useful. I have this habit of not paying attention when I'm editing, and you've probably seen this from time to time where I will basically double up on a clip. And when I was doing an olive, that's basically why, because it was really easy if I wasn't looking at the timestamp of the clip here to redrag the exact same thing in and think that it was something completely new. Now, if I went back and actually checked it to make sure that things were done properly, I wouldn't necessarily need that, but this gives me a good way to see just at a glance that things are the way they should be. Now, this one I didn't really like when I first saw it, but it has really started to grow on me, treating my curse position and my playback position as two separate things in the timeline. So this number you can see right here that is changing as I move my cursor, this is my curse position. Whereas this number up on the right here that isn't changing, that is my playback head position. And then obviously if I click somewhere on the timeline, let's say 11 seconds and 16 frames, then they'll be at the exact same point. And what this lets me do is let's say I always have something in the exact same spot. For example, at 30 seconds, I always have a overlay there showing, you know, like the channel, sub to the channel, things like that. Now, what I could always do is I could go and scrub through the timeline to work out exactly where that's going to be. But the audio is going to play back in this really glitchy and fast way because it's playing back faster than it actually should be. Whereas if I just go and jump the cursor straight to that point, I then don't have to deal with that issue. Speaking of convenient features, when I hover over a clip, you can see this sound and this video icon. If I just drag the clip in normally, it will then turn both those icons blue. But what I can actually do is if I drag from the video icon, it just drags in the video. If I drag from the sound icon, it just drags in the sound. This can be really useful when I want to use things like have the video there to be an overlay for something, or have the audio there as a backing, but I'm going to go and change out the video for something else. You don't necessarily need to drag it in like that. I could always go and drag the clip in normally, and then go and right-click on it, go ungroup clips, and then delete the ones I don't need. But it's much easier to just skip that step entirely. Plus, there are basic things like being at a locker timeline so that while it is locked, I can't delete stuff, I can't move anything. It's not something I use every single day, but it has stopped me from making a couple of mistakes here and there. Also, being able to disable a timeline so that I just don't have to deal with that timeline. Now, I actually use this one relatively frequently. Over on the gaming channel, most days of the week, I upload YouTube shorts taken directly from my live streams. Now, obviously, when I'm streaming, this isn't how the video actually looks. It looks more like, say, this right here. Now, when I'm trying to cut out these sections here, it can be a bit annoying to work with it when it's in this form. Because let's say I have two versions of this, this one and this one here. So if I was to say, for example, crop out my webcam or crop out the game, 
without going and just deleting the other timeline, I wouldn't be able to see anything I've cropped. So by going and disabling the timeline, and then doing the effect, and then disabling the other one, doing the effect, it lets me very easily make those effects, and then what I end up doing is just saving the effect, and then applying it every time I need it. Now this shouldn't be something I have to worry about, but images in the timeline actually function. I can resize it literally as much as I want, because unlike a video, a image doesn't have a set length that it needs to be. The reason I bring this up is because over on the olive side, this used to work, it doesn't work now. If I add an image to the timeline, that image is going to be one frame long, and that is as long as it is ever going to be. There are hacks to get around it, like applying effects that slow down the speed of the clip, but it's not a hack that I should need to do. Images should just work. And speaking of things that work well and aren't a hack, let's say we have these two clips here, and they're grouped together. And then I realize, wait, I actually want to apply an effect to one of them and not the other. So let's say this box blur here. All I need to do is grab the effect and then drag it onto the one on one effect, and then it's only going to be on that individual clip. Very basic, makes it very easy to work with groups. Over on the olive side, it doesn't work as nicely. So if we go and group these two together right here, and then try to apply an effect to the group. So when we select the group, it actually selects both clips. So it's not really a group, it's just linking them together. So if we go and apply the effect, it's actually going to apply it to both of them as if they are just separate clips. So if we now go and ungroup them, what's going to happen here is they both have a separate effect. Something that many Linux video editors are missing are actual, like, render controls. Now, Caden Live is by no means perfect. It does always drop down to 3% for seemingly no reason, even though I set it to 100% every single time. This interface here isn't great. It's just a giant list of different profiles. There's no search option, but it is certainly better than having nothing whatsoever. Plus, you can even go and make your own presets and have it set up exactly the way that you want. Even though a lot of these things you probably aren't going to touch, it is nice to have these options here. And also, very importantly, a render queue. If you're running a Linux video editor and it does not have a render queue, stop what you are doing at this very moment and please add one. It is such a basic feature and it will really improve everybody's workflow. I don't want to have to open up five different instances of your application just to render all my videos for the week. And then for me, this is important, but I get that other people probably don't care. Caden Live uses a very basic save file format. All it is, is XML. So if I want to do something like go and extract out my video chapter markers, or maybe generate a save file that has things structured in a certain way, so I can instantly go and load up that every single time. That's something I can absolutely go and do. With all that being said though, Caden Live still does some things which kind of get under my skin. One of those things being that I don't want to have to make new tracks. So the way that Olive handles it, for example, I can drag in as many clips as I want, I can stack these as much as I want, and I don't need to make a new track. It's literally just going to automatically make as many as I want, and I can do this as much as I want, really. Whereas over on the Caden Live side, I need to go and right click, I need to then insert the track, I need to place where I want to insert it, how many I want to insert. And sure, it's not that annoying to do, and a lot of other video editors do this, but this paradigm is just better. I also really don't like the way that transforms work, so what I mean by this is they have nothing to do with the size of the image. So right now the transform box is a width of 2892. But if I go and do something like say this right here, now it says it is 5698. But you can clearly see the image is far, far smaller because the box doesn't actually align to the size of the image. Now I get this as an option. There are times where you might want to do something like change the point of the center and then rotate around a different point. But as a default, I think that it should always align with the actual size of the image. Speaking of transforms, one thing I really like about Olive is basic effects like volume in the case of an audio clip and transforms in the case of a video clip are automatically applied to everything when they go into a timeline. So let's say this one right here, if I click on this, it has a transform on it. I didn't have to do anything, it just does it out of the box because transform is something that you're probably very likely to use. So it might as well just 
already be here, and volume is the exact same way. Also, Caden Live has a couple of bugs here and there, nothing as major as it used to, but things like occasionally I will drag a bunch of clips into my project and then random clips just won't load in. I can always go and reload the clip and then it works perfectly fine. I've also noticed that sometimes the waveform for like the audio section disappears and the only fix I've seen to actually address that is restarting the application. Not a major issue, I can keep working without it, I just like the waveform being there. And that's pretty much it. Ever since I stopped the video editor series, I've had people ask me to try out this video editor or that video editor, so if you've got any suggestions about things I should go and try out, I'd honestly love to hear them, and I'll get around to it when I get around to it. Hopefully, sooner rather than later, but I'm not making any promises. So if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. If you really like the video, and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe to the Pay link in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robson Plays. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.